Hey gang, I'm Paul with Stud Pack. Welcome back to our channel and welcome back to the Stud Pack Dream House build. Ever since we poured this slab, you guys have been hammering us with comments about the internet wiring on our project. Stud Pack, you gotta run some Cat 6 now. Don't forget the internet, you're gonna need it. And boy, we sure do. It seems like everything Jordan has picked out needs either a Wi-Fi connection or it has to be hardwired. His lights, his cameras, his editing station, the electrical panel, and uh, even your toilet seat, right? Doesn't that thing require like Cat6 cable, Jordan? Maybe, I don't know, who knows? Well, if it's not a thing now, I'm sure one day it will be. So you do your business, you flush, and then a second later, you get a notification on your phone that says something like, hey bud, you might wanna check up on your gut health. Well, that's not a problem, thanks to the sponsor of today's video, AG1. Now, the whole idea about AG1 is to make it super simple for you to get into the daily habit to support your nutritional needs. Now, I've got my cool shaker right here. Let me show you just how easy it is. I've got a cool travel pack in my pocket. In fact, it says comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition. In fact, Jordan, why don't you throw a timer up on the screen? I'm gonna mix this up oh, and chug it and see how long it takes. Here we go. Yeah. Man, that's good. One simple step and I've supported my brain, my gut, and my immune system. Now, before I started taking AG1, I was taking a handful of vitamin tabs, all kind of probiotics and enzymes that I was ordering online and taking those all throughout the day. But with AG1, one gulp in the morning, just like you saw me do, and I'm good to go. So go to drinkag1.com slash stud pack to get started on your order today. And for our viewers, they're gonna send you a year's supply of D3 slash K2 vitamins plus five free travel packs, just like the one I showed you. And a huge thanks to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. All right guys, a lot of you've been following our build for quite some time, but if you're brand new to our channel, this build is pretty simple. Two car garage with a full apartment upstairs. So networking it is not gonna be that difficult. Not to say it won't be easy, but we do have some challenges. Let's go out here to the corner building and we're gonna show you where the internet's gonna start. We actually have fiber in this neighborhood. And if you watched our conduit video, where we ran the three inch for our underground service. You also saw we threw a one inch piece of conduit in that trench for our fiber. Fiber is gonna pop up here into a box on the side of the building. What does that look like? Let's head over to the main house and check it out. So we're over here on the corner of the house. Remember, Jordan's living in here. We're gonna tear it down or get rid of it in another way. But here's where the fiber comes into the building. This line on the left comes in from the pole at the street overhead. This one on the right wraps all the way around the building to his office where he does all the editing. We can't have all these wires exposed on our new building. So if you check it out underneath, there's actually a spot where that one inch conduit can be made up right here. Looks like three quarter. We'll figure that out when they install the box. Now let's open this up and see if we can get rid of this one. Our incoming feed from the fiber company will come in through the conduit underground into the box. And if you check that out right here where I'm pointing with my finger, and right here, that's an exit out the back. So we can go out of the box into the garage. So now that we know what our fiber box looks like, we can come over here to the corner of the garage and get started. Remember, here's our one inch for our fiber coming up underground. And remember those two holes I showed you? Well, there's one on the left, so we can punch through the building right here. We're also gonna put a piece of this one inch PVC behind that box, so it makes our siding job a lot easier. Now, it's really cool that that fiber box has knockouts in the back on the left and the right. If we use the right one, we're gonna come into this bay with these water lines. I really don't wanna be drilling a hole with these PEX lines in the wall. So we're gonna use the knockout on the left and come into this stud bay. So imagine we're all drywalled. We'll probably have some kind of access panel right here. The fiber guys are gonna drill through, grab the fiber, and we're gonna go up and over all the way to the attic space over the stairway. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna run some conduit. So we're gonna be using three quarter inch ENT, electrical non-metallic tubing, better known to all of us DIYers as Smurf tubing. Why? Because in the home centers, you remember it's often blue. We've got a hundred foot roll of the gray stuff and there's plenty of room in there for that tiny fiber cable. And we're even gonna go one better for the fiber installers. We're gonna put a pull string in there and make their job really easy. All right, guys, we have all our material on site, including some really cool tools that Jordan bought, like this one, and we're gonna terminate all the ends of our Cat 6. So make sure you stay tuned for the whole video, and we're gonna show you how we do all of that. But having conduit on site really doesn't do us much good unless we know our route. 
We know this is point A, where we're going to start, but let's head upstairs and show you point B, where we're going to end. All right, we're upstairs. Let's head over to this corner. Now, this corner is right above the corner where the fibers come in the garage. So that Smurf tubing, we're going to pop up right here in this bay. There's no electrical right here. We're going to go through the double top plates, and we're going to follow the trusses all the way up to the ridge. We're going to come all the way back down. And then we're gonna go across into the attic space above the stairs. And we're gonna bring that fiber to the attic space above our main stairs where some other equipment is located. Why do we choose that? Because it is central to really the four places in the building where we have to run CAT 6 to. Straight down to the TV downstairs. TV right here, electrical closet, and Jordan's office, his temporary office, which is gonna be right here in this corner before we connect the house with the main bridge. So that's why we chose that location. And here's it's also cool because it's hidden. The modem is hidden up there. It's not out in the open. Yeah. We use yeah. that attic space to hide a lot of stuff and we're gonna access it through some hidden access panels. So make sure you stay tuned for that. They're ordered, they're on the way and we're waiting for them before we frame this wall. Jordan, I am ready to start running some conduit. Let's head downstairs, and get you some internet in your apartment. So what did we just make? This one inch piece of PVC board, it's just like this one. In fact, it's cut from the same sheet. And this does a lot of things for us. Number one, it gives us a mounting surface to mount our equipment to. So when it comes to side the place, we can butt our siding against this instead of that irregular box. And it's also gonna create a place where we can terminate our conduit. This won't ever rot. And it's gonna make it really easy for our fiber guys to do their installation. Now, if you notice over here, we put a chamfer on this one. We're gonna do the same for this one, but we're gonna screw it to the building first. That's gonna hold it down for me. And I'll route this one later with a little chamfer bit when we do all the other blocks for the sconces and everything else. But for right now, we wanna know where to drill a hole in this so the fiber can exit the back of that box. And also, where's the conduit gonna be on the right-hand side? So I've got the 10 millimeter nut driver. Let's go open that box, take some measurements, transfer it to this, drill that hole, mount this to the building and finally start running some of that smurf tubing all right guys we got our one inch foam cut we know the conduit's going to come in here from underground we're going to go out right here into the building got two screws pre-drilled ready to go and we're in our stud because i can see the screws that attach our zip to our building put a little speed level on there a little torpedo level all right i'm level jordan you like the height yeah do you care it's a good working height right yeah Grab this guy on the fix. Try these home. Come on. <laughs> Self countersinks. I love that feature about this PVC board. My favorite thing. Watch. Boom. And then our panel will cover the screws. Yep. All right. Ready for a little router? We'll do that later. Let's drill this hole and start running some conduit. Safety glasses nearby. That box by the. You have some on your head. Box by the. Clear safety glasses, tinted safety glasses, reading glasses, sunglasses, driving glasses. Oh, I'm fed up with it. All right guys, our holes are cut and we are ready to start running some conduit. Now this thing has a memory to it, look at that. I'm gonna use it to my advantage to pass it to Rad. You got that bud? Yeah. Here we go. All right. We're gonna go over all these two by fours. It's gonna look kind of messy. We're gonna clean it up later with some clamps, but this will hold it up there. Okay, pull a little. All right. All right, another kink. We tried to pull it straight, it just didn't work. Stuff is 
really easy to run. I've actually never used this before, ever. I don't think it was a thing when I was a kid. What, internet? Well, that too. <laughs> But let's go run the other end. We'll cut it, and then we'll show everybody how we put a string in there. It's super easy. You're not gonna believe how easy this is. All right, guys, almost done. My left hand gets us to this wall, so I need a little bit more in the attic space. What do you guys think? Four feet? Yeah. Six wow. feet? Three. Three? I wanna go there. And I wanna try my Linux cutters. We use these for pecs. They ought to bite through here, no problem. I tried it with my utility knife, but that is pretty tough. Look at that. Sweet. All right, let's run this and pull some string. All right, guys, I'm gonna hook the vacuum up to this and turn it on. And Rad, why don't you see what kind of suction we get, okay? Go ahead. Dude, that's awful. Hey, Rad, how was that? What's wrong with your ears? What do you mean very loud? Very good suckiness. <laughs> all right, well, I don't know what that means, but check this end out. I have all these adapters to adapt your vacuum to your power tools that none of them ever fit. But look at that, it was made perfect for this Smurf tubing. Nice. All right, let's make up the other end with the string and we're gonna show you how easy it is. All right, guys, the vacuum is on downstairs. We've got some Klein pulling line, We've got a piece of a uh, plastic grocery bag tied to the end. This is how we used to do it in the old days before the internet. Let's see how this works. Can you hold that, Red? Of course. Might be too much play. Oh, there it goes. What? <laughs> I can hear it. Oh, wow. Oh, you can't hear it. <laughs> It's like a pig in an oil pipeline. Those things they send through there. A pig in a what? They send a pig through an oil pipeline. It tests the thickness of the pipe and all that stuff. Do they name it before they send them in? I don't know. We might be there. No. It's a long way. We're still going. All right, so the sound is back. That must be the plastic bag is in the vacuum and it's drawing all that air again. Let's go downstairs, pull the top of it off. Oh, there you go. And. Uh, <laughs> I can talk over that now and uh, see if it's in there. All right, guys, this was not rehearsed, right? If I open this, we should see the string. No, oh, not yet. We gotta be close though. Let's see if it's here. Let's see if it's here. Gotta be. Oh, nice. There we go. Oh, you know what happened? It got to the bigger diameter hose. And stops. And then the air was just bypassing this. That's how we do it. Nice job, guys. Right here. Boom, boom. And now we're gonna tie it to this three inch conduit so we don't lose it. And our fiber guys are gonna love us. They will love us, absolutely. All right guys, all of our string lines are ran and that was really easy. Now one thing about the little plastic bag trick, obviously the bigger the conduit, the bigger the piece of plastic you need, right? So small piece for this three quarter. But we're gonna call a quick audible here. Check outside, the utility company just showed up and they're already at work. They're gonna swap out the utility pole. They're gonna yank the old one out of the ground and install a new one. I've never seen it done. Neither has Jordan or Rad. So let's go outside and follow along. All right, guys, I talked to the lead on this project. Super awesome guy. Let me tell you what's going on. Let's start with the 20,000 volt service. That's way up here on the upper pole across the street. It comes down to the step down transformer and then coming across the street to this pole, then it splits and feeds Jordan's house and our neighbor's house. What they're doing now is floating the line. They're disconnecting it from this 30 year old pole. Well, it's older than that. It hadn't been inspected in 30 years and they're gonna float it. They're gonna temporarily attach it to the tree or maybe even the bucket. Once it's free of the pole, they're gonna rip that pole out of the ground and set a new one in the same hole. And I know Jordan really likes that because we've been really struggling with the fact that we're gonna have that old pole there and the new one. That was the original plan. But since that pole hasn't been inspected in 30 years, they wanna get rid of it. 
Yeah, guys, we asked them if they could take down those old lines, an old landline, old coax covered with vines. Really going to clean up the street. They were happy to oblige, so we super appreciate that. All right, guys, they are just about to rip this pole out of the ground. If you look at the top of the boom, there's a claw. Here we go. That claw is going to keep the pole from tipping. They've already got it hooked on. They're trying to pull it right now. All right, guys, they are struggling, but I think they're going to get it. I imagine the roots from that tree, here we go, just moved. I imagine the roots from that tree are kind of growing around it. But it's starting to move here at the bottom. using the tree to help them out. That's pretty smart. It's like threading a needle out of there. They gotta watch the fiber, the overhead service, the tree. And touchdown! All right, here comes the auger. The new pole has a bigger butt, so they do have to drill that out. But I think it's gonna be pretty easy, right? Got the new pole set, like six feet in the ground. Now they're back filling the hole with the dirt. And he's got a uh, hydraulic tamper. He's using the guy in the orange vest, tamping the dirt down, packing it while the other two back fill. All right, these guys have it all figured out. Look how they stow the auger against the boom. They strap it to the boom, activate the auger, and it spins itself in place. Pretty cool. All right, guys, the new pole is in. The old pole is stored on the truck for disposal. All that's left for them to do is to unfloat the wires and put them on the new pole. But that's enough of that. We got to head back upstairs and get our internet run. All right, guys, we're back upstairs for our internet wiring and our TV wiring. So check out this box right here. If you've never seen one of these before, I really like these box. It's a combination of 120 volts on one side and then low voltage on the other with a partition. And that low voltage can be anything. It can be CAT6, it can be coax, it can be HDMI, audio, video, anything like that. It even has three quarter inch knockouts. And as you can see, we just ran our Smurf tubing straight through it. We're gonna clean that up in just a minute, but that helps to hold it in place for me for right now. Speaking of holding it in place, if you check up here on the trusses, we strap that down just like we said we were with a two hole strap. And way up there at the ridge, we put two so we have a nice gentle bend. We have a nice gentle bend on the left and on the right. So we are all ready. Remember, that's gonna be fiber in that one. And then transition over here to our CAT6 in the attic space. Let's get back to the box. Remember I told you that we ran the conduit straight through. So I'm gonna cut it in the middle. Now remember, we have a string in there, so I'm not gonna cut all the way through. I'm gonna cut halfway and go from the other side and finish it. And then these should pull apart and the string's gonna be in the middle, just like that. <clears throat> now I've already tied the string off at the top. <clears throat> super, super important. Always tie your strings off. I can't tell you how many times in my career we haven't done that and we spent all that time pulling it and dummy right here pulls it right out. So let me cut this, tie it, and we're gonna show you a cool way to terminate the conduit to the box. All right guys, now we're gonna make up the conduit to the box. This box comes with three quarter inch knockouts. It's pretty common on this low voltage side and we happen to have three quarter inch conduit. But I don't wanna just stick it in there. I mean, it fits in all that, but that doesn't look very great and it kinda of comes in at an angle. So what am I gonna do? Well, they make a connector. A connector is any fitting that connects conduit or this NMB cable to a box. And these are just for Smurf tubing. It's gonna snap on, listen for the click, just like that. And this type has threaded ends with a lock nut. They make that end that snaps onto the box. Our local supplier was just out of them. So I got this type. We're gonna put the lock nut on there. And just like that, 
Now, doesn't that look so much better? We'll put a clamp down here and we're ready to go. All right, guys, remember those clamps we talked about? They're really important in these walls because when we spray foam this and the foam expands, it's gonna push this conduit out and that's not gonna be any good for the drywall, guys. So we're gonna strap it here with a two-hole strap. Grab one more. All right, that top one's done. Now let's come on down here to this bottom one. Now when we come down here, we also wanna clamp this but I'm not sure if I want to put it right next to this 120 volt line. There are magnetic fields around there. We understand there could be interference with the CAT6 and the data. So I might put this over here or I might swing the other line over there to that side. So let us know in the comments what you guys do, those of you who are in the trade. Is it okay to put these together? I think maybe it is because we're in conduit, but let us know, we sure appreciate it. All right guys, we are done running all that Smurf tubing and do you have to do it? Not really. For us, it made sense for the fiber because those guys are going to pull it later. And it made sense over here for the TVs because who knows what's going to be in the future, right? It's always changing and it's going to allow us to change that cable if we ever have to. But there's a couple spots we don't need the conduit. They're going to be temporary locations for the internet. And one of them is going to be right here in this little nook where the future bridge is going to be. And this is where Jordan's going to set up his editing software to edit the videos. So we're gonna come right down the attic with some Cat 6, run it through this, into this wall, and put a box right here for his internet. And then when we build the main house and connect it with the bridge, we just delete this line and we don't have a hole to patch in this wall or an old box from the Cat 6 serving his temporary office. So let's get this guy run and we're gonna show you how we terminate the ends. All right guys, now that all our Smurf tubing is run and we pulled a pull string through all of them, we are ready for our internet, for our fiber, whatever the future holds. And we're actually gonna do it ourselves. Jordan picked up a thousand foot box of Cat6 cable and this is really easy to do. I used to do this a bunch back at the end of last century. Man, saying that makes me feel really old. Well, I was alive last century. Well, most of us were, right? It wasn't that long ago, but just saying that, Makes you feel old. Now, in all honesty, gang, this is the third time we tried to film this clip because the first two times we got the wrong tool or the wrong end. At first, we were gonna put these female connectors in a cover plate and then Jordan could plug his patch cord from the TV, from the computer, right into that. He didn't wanna do that. He wants to go right to the device. Our second thing was we bought these connectors and we had the wrong crimp tool. So another trip to the store this morning, I got it all figured out. You gotta get a tool that's compatible with the connector. This happens to be a pass-through connector. What that means is that all eight wires in there, we're gonna show you, pass through, and then when you cut it with this Klein tool, it crimps it and trims the wires. Pretty slick. Let's do one, we'll show you how easy it is. All right guys, our very next step is to strip the sheathing on our internet cable, our CAT6. Had this awesome stripper by Klein Tools. This guy's cool, because it actually does coax and CAT6 cable or CAT5, whatever you've got. So it has two knives and it has a shutter that prevents you from putting your cable in the wrong one as you're doing all your work. So I blocked off the coax side. I'm gonna push this plunger on the end that opens up this side, stick the cable in. I'm gonna spin it. Two is usually all it takes, two turns. I'm gonna go three, pull it off, and check it out. A perfect strip. So there's my four twisted pair, but I got a couple of items I gotta get out of my way. There's this braided cord in here. I need to cut that because it's gonna interfere with the work I'm about to do. There we go. And we have this piece in the middle. It's probably just for strength in the cable. Cut it loose. Now I've got my four pair ready to go. And if you notice, they are twisted at different rates. Look how tightly the blue and the blue white are twisted compared to how loosely the brown and the brown white are twisted. Very important for the design of this cable. Our next step is to untwist these. So let me do that real quick. All right guys, I've got them all untwisted, but I need them to be straight. So I'm just gonna use a little screwdriver. This is an eighth inch Klein. Love this little guy, it's always in my tool bag. This is just like when you're doing the ribbons, like when you're wrapping presents, right? And it straightens that guy right out. Let me do the other six, and then we're gonna put them in the order they go in the connector. So you notice we have two different color codes here. The top one is T568A. That's for backward compatibility with landlines. We just removed our landline. You're never gonna have one again, right? Right. So we're gonna go with T568B. That's the most common one, that, and so we're gonna use that one. So just like the color coding is right there, see the orange stripe? I'm gonna grab that one right here. That's the white with the orange stripe. Then it's the solid orange. A little tough to do. 
And the green and white stripe is next. See how we're just laying them all in there? All right, guys, got our color coding here, exactly matching that one. Now we just slide on our connector. I'm actually gonna trim these, because they're way long. And that's gonna give me a nice flat edge to push through here. And they're gonna come through the bottom, see them come through. And so you're gonna to get to a point where you can't shove this in the connector anymore because the sheathing is in far enough. Can you see that through yep. there? It's pretty clear. All right, I'm gonna check them one more time and then we're gonna trim it off. Now here's the beauty of this Klein crimper. It's gonna trim these and crimp it at the same time. It's that easy, guys. Terminate Cat 6, make your own patch cables, whatever you wanna do. All right, guys. So we got our pull strings, we're ready to run this. We're gonna do that after drywall, but we wanted to show you this. Also had a bunch of comments about security cameras. We are gonna run CAT6 for those, so we're gonna be good to go. All right guys, if you're making your own cords like this, you're gonna to have to get a tester. It comes with a battery, you plug it in one end, plug the other part in the other end, and they communicate to make sure your wiring is right so you can catch it before you plug this in to your computer. A Lot of comments about the cameras. We are gonna run this CAT6 to the eaves, so we can have cameras up there. But other than that, gang, this is gonna be a wrap on this video. We sure hope you enjoyed it. We had a blast making it. Don't forget to check out our merch over at BunkerBranding.com, at StudPackOfficial on Instagram. So you know what I'm gonna say, run some Smurf tube into your like button, put a vacuum on it, pull a string, smash it. Please subscribe and drop a comment. We'll see you right back here on the Stud Pack Dreamhouse Build in our next video.